What exactly is a nation? It's been a while since I actually stated the definition on this channel, but a nation by the dictionary is a group of people united by common descent, history, culture, or language, inhabiting a particular country or territory, meaning technically nations are not synonymous with countries despite the two labels being used interchangeably. Mass migration, assimilation, and interpersonal relations have largely blurred the line of the nation-state in America, no longer having a discernible or definite ethnic or cultural hegemony, a subject I'd certainly like to visit in the future. And the same can be said for India, the world's soon-to-be most populous country, likely for the rest of human history. Even though India and other South Asian countries are composed of multiple nations, the most famous are located on either side of the South Asian subcontinent, the nations of Bengal and Punjab, which are inextricably linked and have very many similarities. Due to quite the multifaceted history, South Asian identities are quite complex, being a combination of religion, language, phenotype, nationality, and class, which has led to many different political and social movements and conflicts, and a little known fact is that the name of Pakistan was originally created in 1933 as an acronym by Muslims in the subcontinent to describe the constituent nations of Islamic South Asia, that being Punjabis, Afghans, also known as Pashtuns, Kashmiris, Sintis, and the Baluch, but in order to see how this came to be, we would have to go back several centuries. Back before the Muslims, British, or even Greeks for that matter, invaded South Asia, the Bengalis and Punjabis belonged to the same people, the Indo-Aryans, with Sanskrit essentially being the classical language of ancient Indian society, with all Indo-Aryan languages borrowing from and being significantly influenced by this antecedent. But even though they do belong to the same ethno-linguistic macro group, there are quite a few cultural and societal differences between these two groups, along with the other groups in South Asia. So with Punjab being on the far western side of the Indo-Aryan language family, they have had considerable contact with many peoples of Central Asia, Iran, the Near East, and even ancient Europeans, as I mentioned with Punjab being the furthest Alexander the Great ever conquered in the East. But of course, one of the events to have the greatest impact on the Punjabi nation was the invasion and conquest by various Islamic powers starting very soon after the explosion of the religion outside of the Arabian Peninsula. Conquest by the Rashid and Umayyad Caliphates converted a large portion of the population of Sindh and Punjab to Islam who were previously practitioners of Hinduism or Buddhism, although various Indian rulers were able to repel these Islamic powers from further incursion into the subcontinent, and there were still large minorities of Hindus within the conquered territory. Bengal actually became Islamized mostly through trade with Arab and Persian merchants over the centuries, as lying at the crux of many civilizations, Bengal had long been a cornerstone of the trade and diffusion of goods, cultures, ideas, and people from South Asia and the Near East to the Orient, meaning East and Southeast Asia. Now, as many know, the Mughals, an Islamic Turco-Persian power from Afghanistan, would begin its conquest of South Asia in the 1500s, eventually uniting nearly the entire subcontinent, even up to Bengal and Assam in the east in a couple of centuries, further cementing Islam in the region. But their power fell as the land was slowly chipped away by the British and other Europeans, along with the rise of the Hindu Maratha and Sikh Punjabi empires. Now, the Sikh religion is actually quite unique, being a fusion of Eastern and Western philosophies due to its founder, Guru Nanak, extensive travels from Tibet to Arabia. And although there are clear elements of Islam, as Sikhs are monotheistic, many of the ideas and traditions are more similar to Hinduism overall, and Sikhism is today considered a branch of the Dharmic religions. Although a small minority in the Punjab region, the Sikhs had established their own empire independent of the Mughal and Maratha empires, although eventually, along with the rest of South Asia, they would be absorbed into the British Raj. And interestingly, Duleep Singh, the last monarch of the Sikh empire, married an Egyptian woman of half German and half Ethiopian descent, and after being exiled, their children actually came to high prominence in the United Kingdom and other areas of Europe. In a strange twist of fate, Punjab and Bengal would end up being grouped together in the same administrative division of British India, known as the Bengal Presidency, along with much of northern India, while the southern half was administered under the Madras Presidency, with the subdivisions of Bengal and Punjab extending far beyond the ethnic area inhabited by either ethnicity. 
More so than any other ethnic group, Bengalis and Punjabis have spread out across the region of South Asia, with there being large enclaves of these respective ethnicities in most large cities in the region, such as in Bombay, Delhi, Karachi, or Hyderabad. Despite many cries for unity as a single country, the partition of India shortly after independence from the British is what divided the nations of Bengal and Punjab today, as rather than being divided over ethnic or linguistic lines, the former British India was divided between the predominantly Hindu area, now known as India today, and the predominantly Muslim area, now known as Pakistan, or Pakistan. That's right, upon division from India, Bangladesh was originally a part of the same country as what we know as Pakistan, with the other parts of Punjab and Bengal that were not Islamic, forming the Indian states of Punjab and West Bengal respectively. But it's important to realize that the lines were not so clear cut, and following this division, millions of South Asians found themselves in a nation hostile to their religious group, especially in the region of Punjab, with literal millions of Hindus and Sikhs fleeing from the newly formed Pakistani Punjab, and similar numbers of Muslim Punjabis crossing the border the other way, with rape, mass murder, looting, and all sorts of vandalism being widespread in the region, leading to the strong hostilities that still exist to this day. In Bengal, there was a similar movement of people between the Hindu and Muslim regions, albeit with less disastrous consequences, and the fact that India aided in Bangladesh's independence has proved to strengthen relations between these two while further driving a wedge between India and Pakistan. Now, unlike other divided nations such as North and South Korea, Austria and Germany, or even the Somalis, there isn't really any strong ethno-nationalist push to unify these regions. Many South Asian Muslims will identify as Muslim first before any given nationality or ethnicity, so many Punjabis or Bengalis do not consider others across the border to belong to their same ethnic group given the differences in religion, despite sharing the same language, culture, and heritage. Among the Punjabi nation worldwide, it is actually the Sikhs who are pushing the strongest for a revival of Punjabi nationalism with a very active movement for what they called an independent Khalistan from the 70s to the 90s, but their zeal has since largely diminished, and the vast majority of Bengalis in both India and Bangladesh seem quite content with being separate countries. As of 2019, there are approximately 270 million ethnic Bengalis and 160 million ethnic Punjabis worldwide, placing them both in the top 10 largest ethnic groups in the world, and both have large diaspora populations in the rest of South Asia, the Gulf Arab states, Southeast Asia, the Anglosphere, and other Western countries, with Sikh and Hindu Punjabis as well as Hindu Bengalis being vastly overrepresented in the global diaspora, as overall, the majority of both Punjabis at around 73% and Bengalis at around 64% are Muslim. The partition of India had homogenized areas that were formerly quite religiously diverse, as Hindus number no more than 0.5% of the population in Pakistani Punjab, despite being quite a large minority beforehand, and likewise in Indian Punjab, less than 2% of the population is Muslim. But to my surprise, the vast majority of Punjabi Christians are actually still located in Pakistan due to missionaries like Sadhu Sundar Singh. In Bangladesh, although the Hindu minority used to be much larger, there are still millions of Bengali Hindus in the country, as well as Muslims in India's West Bengal. Huge numbers of ethnic Bengalis have also been heading for the northeast states of India, so much in fact that the state of Tripura has actually become a Bengal majority state in only a matter of decades, despite only making up a small minority a few generations ago. It's actually quite fascinating, but there is no turf for this community made up of Bengali migrants in Northeast India that inhabit a contiguous Bengali majority area. So if this is West Bengal and this is East Bengal, technically Bangladesh, would this be Eastern East Bengal? Because it's definitely not a part of Bangladesh. And likewise, the small Rohingya Muslim community of Myanmar is of Bengali origin from migrants who had moved to the area since before and during the establishment of the British Raj, as I discussed 
in an older video. Although the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are quite an exotic mixture of virtually every ethnicity in India due to extensive migration in the past century, due to an influx of migrants from both West Bengal and Bangladesh, ethnic Bengalis are now a plurality in the island chain, with around one-third of the population having Bengali heritage, and even Andaman Creole, a mixed Creole language spoken in Port Blair, is of mixed Bengali, Hindi, and Tamil lexicon. Also of note is that genetic studies and historical analysis show a mass migration of people from the Bengal region to the island of Sri Lanka in the past few thousand years, which helped in the formation of the Sinhalese ethnicity, with much of their vocabulary, culture, and gene pool being of Bengali origin, although the Sinhalese today are the only South Asian ethnicity with a Buddhist majority. A rather unrelated but interesting fact is that in the small West African country of Sierra Leone, Bengali was briefly declared one of the national languages in honor of thousands of Bangladeshi peacekeepers stationed in the country during the latter stages of their civil war in 2002, but very few Bengalis actually stayed in the country. I hope I've explained just why the Bengali and Punjabi nations of South Asia are so divided and why such fierce hostilities exist between them and how the situation is far more complex than what could fit in a 10 minute video. I've personally talked to many Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, and Christian South Asians alike of Punjabi and Bengali heritage, and their perspectives were very insightful in creating this video. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this interesting, yet highly controversial and explosive situation. And for today's poll, let me know which other divided nations you would like to hear more about. And as always, thanks for watching everyone. This has been Mason. And I'll see you next time.